Welcome to the season one finale of Godless Reads, the chilling tales for Dark Knight show where different godless authors read their own story. I'm Drew Stepik, owner of Godless.com and the Godless app. Can't believe we made it through an entire first season. This week I'm coming to you live from the bank views in the original 1960s show, The Beverly Hillbillies. Why am I coming to you live from a bank in Beverly Hills that was in the Beverly Hillbillies? Because today's story by Eric Butler is called The Best of Friends. The Best of Friends originally appeared in Splatter Inc.'s No Anesthetic 2 anthology. The Best of Friends is a horror story about making wrong turns and ending up on the farm in the lair of a gang of hillbillies. In other words, it's a Texas Chainsaw Massacre inspired splatter fest and the perfect way to end a shitty fucking year. Before we get to the story, I wanted to thank Natalie and Craig and all the folks over at Chilling Tales for Dark Nights for giving us this show this year. It means a lot to have these underground and indie voices heard. And even though everyone doesn't love the show, we don't really care because that's not the point. But one last time, kick back, grab your drug of choice, you're ready to ring in 2023, which we hope is going to be a better year. And let Eric Butler introduce you to the best of friends. The Best of Friends, written and read by Eric Butler. I'm starting to think taking the back roads was a bad idea, Susan said, staring at her phone. We haven't had a signal for miles. Well, you're in luck, since I have a keen sense of direction, Lizzie said. Her eyes darted to the rearview mirror. Ain't that right, Jeff? Yep, a regular Amelia Earhart, he mumbled from the back seat. Lizzie snorted and glanced at Susan. He's not wrong. He probably should be the one up here driving. You won Rochambeau fair and square, he said with an exaggerated sigh. Lizzie laughed and glanced back to blow him a kiss. It's not hard to do. You always play rock. Hmm. I never noticed. Susan slid her phone between her legs and pointed toward the windshield. I don't mind back roads usually, but it's so dark tonight. Lizzie clicked the headlights off and the world disappeared. She glanced up, surprised to find the moon and the stars completely gone. She returned her gaze forward and noted... That while there wasn't any light, there was a variance in the inky black shadows. Jesus, Susan whispered. It's like we're at the bottom of the ocean. Yeah, Lizzie replied and turned the lights back on. Look out, Jeff hollered, leaning forward and pointing straight ahead. Where there had just been road moments ago, a woman now stood, gently swaying back and forth. Time seemed to slow, and Lizzie jerked the wheel to the left. The woman disappeared into the darkness once again. The car slid off the road and came to a stop a foot from an old wooden fence. Susan rubbed her forehead and groaned, that's going to leave a mark. Jeff opened his door and slipped out. Popped the trunk. Lizzie did as he asked and hopped out of the car. She stepped to him and wrapped her arms around his stomach. He kissed the top of her head and removed the lockbox from the side compartment. Jeff fished out his keys and removed his Walther P-22 and popped in the magazine. He then grabbed the flashlight and closed the box. He clicked it on and shined the beam on the first aid kit. Better grab that as well, he said, and Lizzie let go to scoop up the box. It wasn't much of a first aid kit, but she hoped it would do. The passenger side door closed with a slam and Susan appeared. Jeff motioned them to follow behind him, and they stepped onto the road. Where is she? Susan asked. Jeff swung the beam of light around, but she was nowhere to be seen. Lizzie reached over and tipped the flashlight down. The woman lay sprawled on her back. Lizzie rushed forward, ignoring his cry to wait. Susan hesitated a moment, then hurried to catch up. She's still breathing, Lizzie said, her voice thick with relief. Hurry with the light. Jeff ran the flashlight beam over the woman. Lizzie and Susan gasped as they took in the damage. He started at her feet, which were bare, and moved up her legs. They were heavily bruised and covered with yellow-crusted scabs. Dark smears decorated her once tan panties. The light continued over her bare stomach to her breasts and finally stopped at her face. Fresh cuts covered her body, crisscrossing over older lacerations, and many of the wounds either wept yellowish pus or outright bled. Thick rope burns and contusions covered her wrists and neck. Her face was a rainbow of colors, as her bruises were all in various stages of healing. 
Susan ran her fingers through the woman's dark, uneven hair. Looks like someone cut this with a dull knife, and God knows the last time it's been washed. A soft groan issued from the woman's chest and her eyes shot open. Terror shined in her pale blue orbs and her groan shifted to a sob when her gaze fell on Susan. Oh sweet Jesus, you came. You came, she said and threw her arms around Susan, burying her face into her shoulder. What does that mean? Lizzie asked, squatting next to the pair with the open first aid kit. The woman pulled her head back, but still clung to Susan as if she might disappear if released. I prayed for as long as I can remember for someone to come, but no one ever did. But tonight, I finally got free, and here y'all are. Lizzie handed some wipes to Susan, and the two began to treat the more obvious wounds. Jeff held out his t-shirt, and Lizzie took it, grateful to cover up the woman's nudity. It wasn't as hot as it had been earlier in the day, but she could tell the temperature had dropped steadily since the sun set. She helped the woman pull it over her head and navigate her arms through the holes. Blood soaked through in a few spots and she shook her head. Well, there goes one of his favorite shirts. Do you have a name? I'm Susan. This is Lizzie and that's Jeff. They call me Crystal, but I don't know if that's my name, she answered with a shudder. They say it because I break a lot. Who are they, Crystal? Jeff asked. He turned in a tight circle, shining the light around. They say we are family, but I'm not sure, she whispered. Uncles Bert and Hog. Jeff moved the light back to rest on Crystal and caught Susan and Lizzie sharing a look. They glanced at him and he shrugged. Let's just get her out of here into a hospital. No, Crystal howled, pushing Susan away. She scrambled backwards, twisting to stand. I won't go to them devils again. They took my babies, all of them, with their nasty tools. She stood on the other side of the road. The brief look of relief she wore in the beginning replaced with a sneer and a glare of mistrust. My babies, she screamed, spittle flying in their direction. Oh, honey, Lizzie said, now standing and facing Crystal with her hands held up. Nothing like that. I promise. These doctors will be there to help clean you up. Make those cuts better. Crystal shook her head, her eyes darting around. It's too late now. Too late for what? Susan asked. God only knows, Jeff murmured and took a step towards the woman. She began to howl again, Lizzie's head cocked to the side. Was that an answer? Crystal stopped to take a breath. But they could still hear a howl from off in the distance. Is that... Susan began to ask, but cut short when Crystal shot forward and grabbed her hand and began to pull. Oh no, I'm sorry, 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 she said, the words rushing out so fast it left her breathless. I thought they were asleep. I did. I really did. All the howls cut off abruptly, and silence settled down in the area. The insects all stayed quiet, and the wind died, leaving the only noise the panting breath of Crystal. She was on her knees in front of Susan now, her face buried into her stomach and her arms wrapped around her waist. We really need to go, Jeff said, turning towards the car. Who the fuck are you? The largest man Lizzie had ever seen stood by the front of the car. Jeff held the flashlight on him, and the man seemed to soak up the light. He leaned on a sledgehammer like a cane and stared directly at Crystal, who now stood a few steps from Susan. What you doing out here so late, little girl? You know the rules, and you know what happens when you break them. Lizzie's bowels turned to water at the icy cold indifference in the man's voice. Each word rolled off his tongue like boulders down a hill. His eyes flashed red, as if the heat missing from his voice collected there. She needs a doctor, Jeff said, Lizzie wondering how he kept his voice and the flashlight so steady. Nah, I'm fine, honest. Just let them go, Bert, Crystal said, the desperation in her voice building with each word. She's not fine, Susan said meekly. No one is talking to you, bitch, Bert said, his gaze still locked on Crystal. Susan rushed to Lizzie and took her hand. Jeff pulled out the gun and pointed it at the man. Enough, we're going to leave now, so back off. Huh, Bert said his gaze shifting to Jeff and the gun. You think it's gonna be that easy? Jeff clicked off the safety. Yeah, I kinda do. 
No, 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 Crystal muttered and stalked back and forth behind Lizzie and Susan. Listen, dude, Lizzie called out. Just let us go, please. Bert straightened. His gaze swept over everyone and came back to settle on Jeff. Hmm, I guess y'all can go since you said the magic word, but she stays. Jeff shook his head. I don't think so. Bert shot forward with a roar and swung the sledgehammer. Time seemed to slow for Lizzie, and an odd sense of calm washed over her. The sledgehammer connected with Jeff's hand. The gun went off, and the car passenger window shattered. For a moment, everything was quiet, and she began to suspect she might be in a dream. Crystal's hand fell on her shoulder, and the woman jerked her back. Lizzie noticed Susan turned as well, and the wall of sound crashed down over them. Jeff's screams made her skin crawl and she glanced back the flashlight lay off to the side but the cloud cover shifted and the moon shined down to give her a clear view of both men Jeff was on his knees cradling his injured hand tight against his chest Bert stood before him the sledgehammer held high over his head don't look Crystal begged pulling on both women to follow her off the road Lizzie ignored the woman, her eyes wide and locked onto her lover. The sledgehammer dropped and Jeff's head disappeared into a spray of gore and brains. Blood pumped from his neck and his body swayed. She screamed, but all she heard was a low hum. Bert kicked out and knocked the body to the road and started stepping towards the women. Lizzie spun, her hand still clutched tightly in Susan's, and they ran into the field. Susan tried to keep her grip on Lizzie's hand while they ran over the uneven ground. Her chest burned, each breath harder than the last. She glanced back and almost fell in relief. Bert's dark shape simply stood there, at the edge of the road, she guessed. She pulled back on Lizzie's hand and slowed down. The cloud shifted once again and plunged the area into darkness. Don't stop, Lizzie hissed, struggling to free her hand so she could continue to run. He's not following, she gasped. Crystal ran back and hissed, just for a bit. He's all about the hunt. We'll get a head start, but you never know how much before he releases the dogs. We can hide in the barn, but only if we take advantage of the dark. A howl sounded from off to the right, and Susan hunched over and vomited. The hot spray burned her throat and filled her mouth with the aftertaste of fajitas. The smell reached her nostrils and her stomach heaved again, but there was nothing left to come up. She wiped at her mouth and tried to spit out the taste. Lizzie reached over and grabbed her arm and tugged. We have to go, she whined, pulling on each syllable. Susan moaned, but allowed herself to be dragged into a jog. She glanced back, but saw nothing but the night. A soft breeze rustled the leaves of the bushes the three women hid behind. Their target, a red barn, sat less than a few hundred feet away, bathed in moonlight. Susan lay flat on the ground. Her right hand rested on Lizzie's back. She trembled, her hands pressed tightly over her mouth, trying to stifle her whimpers. She'd been this way since the cloud cover shifted once again and stopped their progress. Susan fought the urge to check the time again, her hand still stung from Crystal's slap. That was at least 15 minutes ago, and no one had shown up yet. Doesn't mean they won't, or worse, they're already here, watching. Bert seemed like a man who would enjoy watching them turn on each other. Another howl came from somewhere off to the right. She pulled Lizzie closer and held her tight. It changed positions every few minutes, often coming from the exact opposite direction than before. Shh, she whispered, stroking the woman's hair. It's gonna be all right. Those clouds will move again, and we'll sneak into the barn and hide. Lizzie nodded, but kept her face tight against Susan's chest. The breeze picked up, and soon the area plunged back into darkness. She jumped when Crystal put her hand on her back. Susan cried out in shock, but luckily her scream sounded like a random bird in the night. On the count of three, we need to crawl forward and then run to the barn, Crystal hissed. Remember, you want to go to the far back corner. Susan nodded her understanding, unaware if the woman saw it or not. She squeezed Lizzie tighter and then released her. She wanted to hold her hand, but the woman still had them both pressed to her lips. Crystal began the count. One, two, three. They started forward, 
shimmying through the foliage and popping up into a squat on the other side. Crystal was already moving, a darker shadow in an already black environment. She melted away, and Susan's stomach lurched. She glanced up, knowing they needed the cover, but desperate to see some moonlight. She reached out and grabbed Lizzie's elbow. We need to move. Are you ready? I can't. Lizzie moaned through her fingers. Just let me stay here. I can hide here. Crystal says they'll release the dog soon. We need to be somewhere they can't find us. Somewhere not in the open, she whispered. Dogs? Susan hissed in exasperation. This was the third time she reminded the woman about the dogs. Yes, and I for one don't want to get bit, so let's go. They stood and began to make their way towards the dark shape of the barn. Its inky black shadow loomed overhead. Howls issued from the darkness. No longer just one, but a chorus of cries from all directions save one, the barn. The cloud shifted once more and the moonlight shined down on the building. Susan groaned. It was much further away than she'd estimated and the howls were building in volume. She pulled on her friend's arm, hoping to jumpstart her motion. The two women stumbled forward. Susan's legs ached, but she kept running. A scream pulled her attention to the left. Crystal held onto Jeff's shirt around her waist while a large dog pulled on the hem. It stretched between the two until a loud, ripping noise echoed through the field. Crystal cried out again and stumbled back, her arms windmealing as she struggled to keep her balance. She fell back into the high grass. The dog threw its head back and howled. Three more dogs burst from the shadows and circled the spot where Crystal now lay. They shifted from growls to howls and then fell upon the woman. No! Crystal cried out, stretching the word until it sounded like she was howling as well. The dogs answered with snapping jowls, and Susan realized it was now or never. Lizzie, come on! She sprang forward, her friend in tow. She focused on the dark shadow that was the barn. As good a place as any to die if they should catch us. As they got closer to the building, she shook her head at the thought. We're gonna make it. She wanted to scream it at Lizzie, but she had neither the strength nor the desire to let her pursuers know where they were. They slid to a stop at the barn, and Susan struggled to raise the latch and open the heavy side door. God damn it, please! Tears of relief ran down her cheeks at the sound of the latch unhooking and the door sliding open. She ushered Lizzie through the opening and glanced around one last time. The dogs were still hovering over the area where Crystal fell, and there was no sign of Bert. Crystal promised the only way out was to hide in the barn until just before dawn and then sneak back to the car. She prayed the woman was right. Moonlight shined through the windows, located on both ends of the building, and two sets of emergency lights offered illumination near the center of the barn. Pockets of shadows hid the outer edge. The two women were in the back where they kept tractors, a truck, and all their loose parts. A row of toolboxes lined the far end. Susan crept to the half wall and peeked over. A foul stench assaulted her nostrils and her stomach clenched. She bit down on her knuckle, struggling to fight back the urge to vomit. She scanned the area and quickly located the source. A fenced-in area in the middle contained too many pigs to count. Most slept in a pile, huddled together, but there were three pigs lying a bit away from the group with their legs sprawled out. God, what is that smell? Lizzie whispered. The reason the dogs won't find us, Susan said before motioning her friend closer. She pointed over the wall. Those pigs will hide us until we can get out. We just need to find a weapon, or maybe we can drive that truck out of here. Is that an office? Lizzie asked, pointing to a small room across the barn. Maybe there's a phone. Susan glanced and shrugged. Or the keys. Let's check the truck first, and then look. She swung around and tiptoed towards the truck. Numerous machine parts and tools littered the floor. She scooped up a screwdriver, soothed by the weight in her hand. She leaned into the truck's window and checked the ignition. Damn it, of course that would be too easy. Where do you think they'll be? Susan asked over her shoulder. After a moment of waiting for an answer, she turned and swore. Lizzie was not standing nearby. She rushed back to the half wall to find Lizzie sneaking across the barn. She slipped from shadow to light, her head locked on the office door. Susan held her breath, willing her friend to make it across the building. Lizzie cried out and tumbled out of sight. 
Two loud clangs echoed through the barn, and Lizzie began to wail. An alarm sounded from above, and lights clicked on throughout the barn. Susan raised a hand to cover her mouth. Lizzie lay on the floor, her right shoulder and left knee caught in bear traps. Blood ran past the steel teeth and pulled around her writhing body. Her screams only stopped long enough for her to take a breath and then began again. The hairs on Susan's arms rose at the anguish in those cries. The broad barn door swung open and Bert stood there, his hand wrapped around Crystal's ankle. Three of the dogs burst into the barn, their heads raised as they sniffed the air. Susan paled. Her heart slammed against her chest and the room began to spin. You can't stay here, she told herself, knowing those dogs would have no trouble finding her by the wall. She took a deep breath and rushed towards the pen. Those pigs are my only hope. She slipped between two of the rails and hid behind the pile of swine. Looks like we caught one, Bert said to the dogs. But there's still one more somewhere out there. The dogs began to bark and ran through the barn. They stopped by the wall and the back door but quickly moved on searching for the intruders. One moved to Lizzie, stopped by her side to paw at her body. Her cries intensified until her voice was shredded. Bert stepped into the barn, dragging Crystal by the leg. Susan stared at the deep gouges and mangled flesh that decorated her face, chest, and throat. She left smears of blood behind like a snail trail on the dirt floor. Bert released her by the pig's corral and walked over to Lizzie. He squatted down, his hands roughly moving over her body before pinning her beneath his left hand. He raised his right hand to his lips and pressed a finger against them. Shh. Lizzie grew quiet. Her wide eyes were locked on his face and tears ran down her cheeks. Bert reached down, pulled the metal jaws around her knee open. He tossed it to the side with a clang and moved to the trap on her shoulder. She shuddered in relief after he removed it and issued a long sob. Bert rose and grabbed a thick rope from the wall. He tied it quickly to her ankle and tugged on the other end. Lizzie's sob turned into a yelp of surprise as she rose into the air. He tied it off when her eyes evened up with his. A smile grew on his lips as he studied her face. Pain and fear can unlock a person's true beauty, and I promise you will be more beautiful than you ever thought possible, he said, patting her cheek. He turned and swung his gaze over the barn. But first, I need to feed the pigs. Susan shivered from the icy tone in his voice. He stepped to a large machine from the corner of the barn and pulled it over to the side of the pig's pen. Susan stared at the machine, vaguely aware of what it did, but confused why it was placed there. He hit a switch, and the machine came to life. It trembled and issued a whirling, grinding noise. Bert lifted Crystal up. Snack time, little piggies, he said loudly to be heard over the rumble of the machine. He inserted Crystal headfirst into the feed funnel with a laugh. The machine shook and the rumble turned into a deep whine. Susan stared with wide eyes, suddenly very aware of what the machine did. Blood squirted from the discharge tube and shot over the fence, splattering gore all over the pigs and ground. Susan stifled a cry of horror, burying her face between two pigs. Some of the creatures began to wake up, squealing and grunting in glee. Susan stayed pressed against the swine at the back. Chunks of bloody flesh plopped onto the ground, drawing the pigs to the mess. The pigs near the back of the pile began to wake. She scrambled on all fours, trying to avoid the beasts and being seen by Bert. The pen churned with activity, and the pigs knocked her to the ground. She slid through the muck, her clothes soaking up the blood. The pigs squirmed around, slamming her with their bulk and hooves. She curled into a ball, throwing her arms around her head. The swine continued their rampage, turning their pen into a muddy, blood-soaked mess. The noise was deafening between the pigs and the machine, and she chanced to peek to see if she could get clear. From the corner of her eye, she noticed a large pig rushing at her. Her shocked cry was cut short when it slammed into her face and knocked her out cold. Susan woke to the sound of dogs barking. She blinked through the blood caked in her eyelashes and fought back the urge to vomit. Her stomach rolled at the even worse stench now hanging over the pen. The swine were relaxing, resting after their late night meal. She found herself pressed tight between two of them. 
The blood formed a crust on both beasts and her skin. It was then she realized she was practically naked. She blinked, trying to remember where her clothes might have been torn to shreds and scattered throughout the mud. Susan bit her bottom lip, hoping to stifle the scream building in her chest. She twisted her head a bit, looking for an escape but finding Lizzie still dangling from the rope. Her arms hung down and she turned in a slow circle, tiny whimpers slipping out as she gasped in pain. Her clothes were gone, lying in a pile off to the side. Long cuts decorated her torso and blood ran down to drip from the ends of her hair and fingertips. Bert sat off to the side, his gaze locked on her as she slowly spun. He scratched one of the dogs behind the ear, the other two laid by the growing pool of blood beneath her. How am I supposed to get out of here? A twinge of guilt rushed through her, but she knew the truth. There wasn't any hope for Lizzie. So if she could figure a way out, she would leave in a heartbeat. She'd bring help back, but she understood it would be a long shot. The pig behind her shifted and its thick penis pressed against her ash cheek. Her chest ached and she wanted nothing more than to scream, but instead released it as a low groan. Lizzie grew quiet, and after a moment, Bert stood and stepped towards the woman. She simply swayed, her tongue now hanging limply from her mouth. Oh God, Lizzie. Her groan shifted to a sob. Bert swept his gaze over the pen before returning his attention to Lizzie's body. He lowered her to the ground, and the dog sat up in excitement. He motioned for them to stay, and he removed the rope from around her ankle. She rested limply in his arm. Susan watched in horror as he slowly ran his fingers over her cuts, stopping to probe them before moving to the next one. The penis pressed against Susan stiffened, and a hand slipped over her mouth to stifle the cry that slipped out. Bert glanced at the pen. His eyes narrowed, but after a moment they swung back to Lizzie's bare breasts. He likes them just as they take their final breath and shits themselves, a man whispered, his breath tickling her ear. And they think I'm strange. He giggled, and his free hand slid up from under her to squeeze her breast. Lizzie screamed into the man's hand but stopped as the bloody mud worked its way into her mouth. The man giggled again. Oh, don't worry. He'll revive her, and then the game begins again. Our dear crystal lasted longer than most, but I think that final time finally broke her. But in the end, I know she loved us. I mean, look at the plentiful bounty she gifted us. Susan squirmed, hoping to get free, and his grip tightened. His fingers dug into her breast, and her jaw creaked from the pressure. Stars danced before her, and she stopped moving. That's a good girl. Now, I don't know about you, but I love to watch a little before scratching that itch, he said with a tenderness that chilled her to the core. Don't you worry, none. For a man named Hog, I'm a very giving lover. Susan trembled, her wide eyes locked on Bert as he quickly undressed. She pushed against the pig in front of her, and it only shook in mild irritation. Her hand slid down its back and slapped against the handle of the screwdriver she had found earlier. The man slid his hand from her mouth to her other breast and began to pinch and squeeze. Shh, he whispered into her ears. He hears us, and you'll be hanging up there, and he'll cut these amazing titties off. She stifled the moan building in her chest, aroused and repulsed by his touch. One of his hands slid further down to rest on her stomach. His fingers danced at the top of her panties, teasing her by inching closer with every second. I can protect you, but you have to prove to me you're worth it. Bert stood nude over Lizzie's body. He was erect, and she swallowed in disbelief. Dead or alive, she wanted nothing to do with either man. She glanced down. Hog's penis was peeking out from between her legs. The slimy muck from the pen covered the thick head, and her stomach heaved at the thought of it entering her. His hand slid back up and painfully twisted one of her nipples. Don't you blow this for me, he whined in her ear. I found Crystal, and he took her changed her. Trust me, we don't want that. Vomit sprayed from her mouth, splashing against the pig's body and running down to mix in the mud. Her fingers slid around the screwdriver, and she tugged with all her might. 
The tool came free, and she swung it back over her shoulder. The Phillips head struck Hogg's nose and slipped into his right eye. He cried out, and the sudden noise set the other swine to squealing and grunting around the pen. Bert lowered himself over Lizzie, ignoring the sounds of the hogs. Susan pulled the screwdriver free and wiggled back and forth to escape his grip. His penis shrank and slipped free from between her legs. She squirmed away and pulled herself up to her knees. She smiled in triumph, her white teeth shining bright in contrast to the dried, bloody slime covering her skin. She stood, stepped over, and around the pigs to make her way to the edge. The machine's rumble and the chaos of the pigs hid the noise of her advance, but she could see Bert was lost in his exploration of Lizzie's openings, the natural ones and those he created with his knife. A glimmer of hope surged through her when she noticed Lizzie's chest moved slightly up and down. We're going to be free. Susan climbed to the top of the fence and leapt. She screamed and drove the screwdriver down into the meat of his back. He roared and slung her to the side. She slammed to the ground and struggled to catch her breath. He reared back, desperately trying to pull the screwdriver free. He hollered, spinning around and stretching to find the handle. His fingers curled around the end and he pulled. Blood spurted out and he dropped the screwdriver with a curse. It landed with a clunk and rolled away. He stepped into the pool of Lizzie's blood, slipped, tumbled back. His neck slammed against the feeder edge of the wood chipper, and he went limp, all movement leaving his body. Susan crawled towards him, pushing up to her hands and knees, then struggling to her feet. Bloody bubbles popped on his lips as he whined for help, his words lost in the rumble of the machine. She stopped in front of him and spit in his face. Her body trembled as hot rage rushed through her. She gritted her teeth and bent down to lift his legs. She continued to lift until his head slid down the feeder just enough for the gears to catch his hair and pull him deeper into the machine. Susan cackled with laughter as his blood sprayed into the pen, bathing the pigs in gore. Her laughter became wheezes and she turned to help Lizzie. She stepped down, her foot landing on the screwdriver. Her arms flailed as she tumbled backwards into the machine, her screams cut short as the grinder ripped her face from her skull. Giggles came from the pen, and the gate pushed open to free the swine. Hog crawled from the muck, one hand pressed tight against his bloody eye socket. He slithered to Lizzie and lay down next to her. I'm so excited to get to know you better. Just need a little rest and then we will become the best of friends. He whispered into her ear. He pressed his lips to her cheek and held it for a moment. His good eye closed, and just before he began to snore softly, he repeated, The best of the best of the best of the best. Chilling Tales for Dark Nights. Want to make sure you never miss a Chilling Tales for Dark Nights video again? Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell to turn on notifications.